What's up, YouTube? Dylan here with Dylan's Home Espresso Bar, and today we have a fun one in store for you. She is gonna learn how to use the Breville Barista Express. Yes, she is going to learn how to be an at-home barista, and I am going to be teaching her. So if you're new to the espresso game or you're new to having a Breville Barista Express, you're gonna wanna watch this because she may have the same struggles as you do, and I am gonna walk her through the process so that she becomes an expert at pulling shots of espresso and frothing milk like a champ. And hey, you never know, she might become a professional barista. You never know. Before we start this video, and before we get in to her actually using the Barista Express, I just want to say a shout out to a couple really important <laughs> people or fur babies in my life. Yes, it is two of my puppies' birthday today and they are two years old, the big two. So we're gonna go ahead and introduce them once again to you guys, the viewers at home. And we just want to say happy birthday. Here is Buddy, say happy birthday, bud. This is Buddy, he's two years old. Say hi, say hi, baby. And, and there's Theo. Theo. So we both got them all ready and camera ready, I should say. And they need they're a just haircut. they're just extremely excited to be on this channel. As you can hear, they were they were like extremely happy. Oh gosh. Oh jeez, baby. <laughs> oh my god. Throwing his head back. So <laughs> so again, I just want to have a shout out to my two fur babies. Happy birthday, buddy and Theo, the big two years old. So without further ado, let's get straight into rolling the intro. What's up, YouTube? So just like we promised, I am gonna be teaching her how to become a home barista, so that way maybe if I don't wanna make a coffee one day, she can make one for me. No, it's actually just a joke. She's actually gonna to wanna to learn because I know many of you who are just getting the machine, who are struggling with the machine, or you've even had the machine for quite some time who are still struggling, this is gonna be a good instructional, kind of video, but we're gonna make multiple of these because obviously she's not gonna pick this up in one day. Maybe with my help, uh, she's gonna pull a decent shot today. However, many of you at home are doing it all by yourselves and it's a lot more difficult to learn because you don't have someone coaching you step by step on how the process goes. And like I always say, you have to stay as consistent as possible because the beans are constantly changing day in and day out and the dial in process gets even harder each day if you don't dial it in each and every day. So to make this harder on her, I am actually going to be having her use some store-bought beans that have been in this canister for probably a good month and a half. So, I mean, it's darker roast. It's just from my local grocery store. There is no roasted on days. So these beans are pretty old. And the reason I want to do it this way is because dialing in old beans are extremely challenging. A lot of you at home who just got the machine are actually using older beans and it's going to make it harder for you to dial in your shot. So that's why she is going to be using the older beans that I have not been using because it's so much easier just to use freshly roasted beans but we don't want to make it easy. We want to make it difficult. So that way it's easier for you guys to follow along. And she knows nothing of what we are doing today because today is the first day I brought it up to her and she was definitely up for it. But like I said, this is going to be almost like a series. So if you guys like this idea and enjoy this content, if you guys can hit that like and subscribe down below and hit that push notifications on that bell button, so you never miss another one of our videos. That would be greatly appreciated. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. We're gonna get right in to the espresso making from home, teacher style. <laughs> Let's get it. Get it. All right, so as we begin, I am gonna be teaching her how to pull the perfect shot of espresso or just good shots of espresso today. So what we are gonna be doing first is you're gonna to want to grab your bean canister. You want nicely, freshly roasted beans, however, she's not getting that today. Uh, you're gonna to want to get the dosing cup. So we're actually gonna use the Breville Smart Grinder. So that way it's a lot easier for you guys to see. 
All right, so first things first, you're gonna want to get your cup and put it on the scale. And this is a single dosing method that has definitely helped for me with consistency. And it's just a lot easier than just putting a lot of beans into the bean hopper. Number one, they become stale. And number two, it's really hard to get the right dose each and every time to stay consistent when pulling your shots. So single dosing is definitely the way to go. On the Barista Express, I like to stick around 17.5 grams. So that way I have a little bit of room to work with going up to 18 or going down to 17. And it's just my taste preference. So it's definitely up to you. Just a matter of what your tastes allow and what you think is better. So without further ado. So right now she is going to be dosing 18 grams. 18 grams. Okay. So now that we have the 18 grams in there, we are going to bring that over to the bean hopper and dump the beans in. There you go. And put the lid back on. Perfect. And now you're going to want to set the cup right underneath of it. All right. Now that we have the cup right underneath the grinder, we're going to look at the settings. So right now, the grind time doesn't really matter because we're single dosing. So we're just going to get, we just want to grind enough time for all the beans to get dosed into the dosing cup. So now, right now, we're on two shots for drip. And then for espresso, we are on grind size 13. So going down, so like 12, 11, 10, that's going finer. And going up, 14, 15, 16, is going coarser. So depending on the shot quality that we get coming up here, that's going to determine whether we have to go finer, coarser, or stay the same because we got that perfect shot, which would be extremely lucky. But without further ado, you can go ahead and hit the button there. Start? Yep. So right now it is completely done. So go ahead and take the cup out. And I'm going to show you guys something at home. Go ahead and place the cup right in the middle of the scale again. So as you guys can see. There's retention, right? There is a little bit of retention. But actually, that is not bad at all. Normally, with the Barista Express, with the built-in grinder, you're looking at about a 0.4 to 0.5 gram off difference. So 0.2 is not too, too bad. So now what we are going to do is you are going to go ahead and take out the portafilter handle. This? Yep. And you're gonna want to get a rag because you're always gonna wanna dry that off. So go ahead and dry off inside of the basket. You don't want that to be wet before you go to pull your shot. Okay. All right, now you're gonna go ahead and take the cup off the scale and you're gonna put the porter filter over the cup so it fits in place. Like that? Yep. And now you're gonna to want to tip it over and put it onto the mat. So tip over the porter filter and the cup together so you don't spill it. Like this? Yep, onto the mat. And I'll give it a couple taps, keep the cup on pretty tight. A couple more. All right, don't break it. <laughs> uh, spin it a couple times, a little faster. All right, now just pick straight up. Perfect. All right, so now that we have no the beans, no static, she, she's learning. <laughs> now that we have all the beans transferred over to the portafilter handle, you're gonna take your finger very lightly above the top of the brim and you're gonna go ahead and smooth out those beans so that it stays, nope, not pushing down, just kind of hovering yeah. over it so you even them out in the portafilter basket. Nope, nope. So do not do that at home. <laughs> so what you are gonna wanna do is you're gonna want to take your finger and just kinda gently graze over the top of it because we have a distribution tool for it, but we like to get it as even as possible into the portafilter basket because if you use your finger like she did, you're gonna see indentions in here and that's gonna make for channeling in the shot. Uh -oh. So because she's already done that, we might get a lot of channeling, but that's okay, it's her first time and we're just learning how to use the machine so now you're going to go up there and grab the this one yep you're going to grab the distribution tool oh, that's heavy. so you're going to want to turn it to the distribution side so if you guys are new to the game that is going to be the distribution side and on the other side is going to be the tamping side so you're going to notice that that's the flat surface and if you turn that over 
the distribution side of the tool is going to have like a blade like surface and that's going to really even out all the grinds into the port filter basket. So now that you have that, you're going to place that over top. Does it matter where? Uh, I mean, it's going to fit right on the middle. So, yep, you're going to put it right in there. So push down on it. Not hard. And then you're going to go ahead and spin it about four times faster. So you're going to want to wipe off all this extra right here. So wipe that off. With my finger? Yep. With the finger. <laughs> and then you're going to want to take the tamper and hold it like a doorknob. Like you're going to go open a doorknob. Do you open a doorknob like that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and put your thumb and your index finger down like that. So your thumb and your index finger are touching the main part of the tamper, just like that. Mm -hmm. And you're going to want to put the porter filter on the side of the mat. So you want to put it on the flat surface, not never on the spouts. You want to make it to where it's on oh, the actual surface right there. So now you have the most control as possible when tamping your shot. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure put it straight on just put it just lay it onto the porter filter itself without pushing down mm -hmm. and you want to make sure that it's nice and even so obviously your one side is higher so this side mm -hmm. is going to be higher than this side right now so that's going to be bad so look at it so mm -hmm. that way it's nice and even is it nice and even i think did you look at it how can i tell well look down oh pick up the porter filter and, and the handle and look at it no, that's the tamper. <laughs> Put the tamper back on. And now lift it up. No, not the tamper. The hook. So let go of the tamper. Now pick up the porter filter handle. And now look at it. Yeah. Does that look even all the way around? Not at all. Not at all. Okay, so go ahead and fix that. Make it even. That? If you think that's even. Yes. So yeah. now go ahead and put it back down. Okay. And now you're going to apply even force to each side of the porter filter. So you hold it however is comfortable for you. Did you apply good force? So no. one thing that she's doing you do not want to do. So she's applying force, picking it up and then putting it down and applying more force. You just wanna make it a one fluid motion. So you wanna apply force without picking it up and then tap on the other side and do a little tiny half turn and then pick straight up. So go ahead and do it one more time. Now turn just a half a little bit. There you go. Now pick it straight up. Perfect. And you're going to want to push the single cup button on the machine. Yep. So now as soon as it starts going, just press it again. Yep. Press it again. All right. Now take the rag. Okay. Go ahead and gently wipe the tray so that way it's not wet. And then slightly wipe the group head up there this nope the group head the part where the water came out of <laughs> there you go all right so now you're going to go ahead and lock that into the group head perfect all right so now what you're going to do is i always move the steam wand just because it gets in the way and you're going to go ahead and place a scale underneath of the porter filter there you mm -hmm. go and now you're gonna go ahead and grab one of these cups up there. You're gonna go ahead and set that underneath, right in the middle. And you're gonna to wanna to turn the scale on. Awesome. And that's just going to tear it to make it at zero. So now all you have left to do is go ahead and press the double cup button. And we'll see how the shot turns out. So, shot doesn't look too, too bad. All right, so in 18 seconds, she yielded out 40 grams. So, shot was definitely not bad at all. Uh, definitely a good shot. So, we're gonna go ahead and take this out. And you're gonna see that there is very good crema inside of the cup. Good shot, honey. Thanks. So tamping was a little rough, <laughs> but she got the job done. And all in all, we're just trying to get a good shot here. Uh, 
So now that we have our good shot of espresso, we're just gonna go ahead and move this scale. And then she is going to grab a pitcher from the refrigerator. So if you wanna grab one of the pitchers from the top. Okay. And then go ahead and grab the milk as well. Oh. It's always hard to froth without milk. <laughs> <laughs> So now you're going to take that and you're going to pour it to the bottom part of the spout. So about halfway up. So see where that spout is? So show so show everybody the cup. Okay. And now what you're going to do is you're going to fill it to the bottom of the spout. Okay. You see what I'm talking about? Yeah. Do you want to show the viewers at home where it's at? Yes. The bottom of the spout, is, I think, down here. Yep. So right there. You're going to want to pour it right to there. Okay. So that way you allow some room in there when you're frothing your milk. Perfect. This is going to be extremely challenging because, especially because it is your first time. Mm -hmm. So one thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure that it's on first. Don't do it yet. And then you're going to make sure that it's running. So the more that it's running the longer it takes, it's gonna take a little bit longer because it's not a commercialized machine. However, the steam power is not as strong, but it is decently still very good. But you have to wait until the pump fully kicks on so that way you have the driest steam possible because otherwise you're gonna be adding and introducing a lot of water into your milk, which is not good. So you're gonna to want to make sure that it's leaned up against the spout, the steam wand, and you're gonna make sure you wanna either have it at three o'clock or nine o'clock into the pitcher, okay? So with that being said, you want the top of the actual steam wand where it's gonna lay right above the milk. So it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be submerged into the milk and it's not gonna be all the way up on top of the milk. It's gonna be right, right happy medium. So it's literally gonna be penetrating the milk and that's all. And that's how you're gonna turn it right back on. So go ahead and stick the steam wand into the tray. So you're not steaming the wall. There you go. And now go ahead and bring the steam lever towards you all the way right there. And then now the pump's going to kick on. So let's wait until we see the pump kick on. It takes a little bit just because this is a single boiler as opposed to the dual boiler where you can just do it on command, but that's okay. It just takes a little bit longer. So keep waiting. So we're almost there. Matter what hand I use. Now you're gonna turn it off. Now bring it into the cup. All right, now you're gonna start it up. Start it up. Like this? Yep, yeah, start it up. So you can't, you don't wanna wait too, too long. Nope, rest it up against the, you wanna rest it, no, you wanna rest it inside like that. All right, hold it up there. No, you want So, the way she's doing it, you do not want to hold it straight into the milk. You want to hold it like this at an angle, and then you want to rest that against it so you're not adding enough air. So, there you go. So, keep it right there. You don't have to hold the actual steam on itself. Just hold the cup with both hands. So, right now, she is adding air to the milk, which is good. So, right now... She's still adding air, which is good. Keep adding the air. And right now she's choosing to be at three o'clock. She's choosing to hover the mug over instead of resting it on the spot, which is a little harder, but definitely up to her preference. All right, now you're gonna wanna submerge it into the milk a little bit. All right, keep dunking in there a little more, right there. And then hold the bottom of it with your other hand until it gets hot, too hot to touch. So actually put all your hands on the bottom of it. There you go. So when it gets too hot to touch. Too hot. Is it too hot? Yeah. Okay, I'll go ahead and take it out. So now she's just going to make sure the steam wand is nice and wiped down. All right, so now you are going to tap the pitcher on the table. And that's just gonna release all the air pockets. Now you're gonna swirl a little bit. So go ahead and swirl that milk, mix it together. Keep it going. All right, now you're gonna take your glass, or your shot of espresso. You're gonna tap that on the ground a little bit. Espresso? Yep. 
Oh, now spin it just a little, swirl it just a little bit. Okay, there you go. Grab the cup with your hand on the bottom of the actual cup itself. That's so right your left hand. Okay. Like that. And now tip it towards you a little bit. Right there. Now you're going to want to take the milk uh -huh. and go ahead and pour it in there. So you want to pour it in there high first. Like this? Yep. And now spin it. Okay. Okay, let go. And now you're going to come back up and now you're going to try pouring some latte art. So a little lower. You have to be all the way to the lower part of the cup to pour it. Like my left hand? Nope. The pitcher has to be next to the cup. There you go. <laughs> 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 so not like that folks but it's okay just go ahead and pour the rest just go ahead and pour the rest of it in there right there okay right there right there all right so go ahead and put that down and go ahead and give the viewers a taste test here Does it taste good? Yeah, it looks like crap though. <laughs> All right, so now you can go ahead and what we call Britneyifying it. Go give about two to three pumps of vanilla. Ooh. And then you're gonna add some caramel. And you're just gonna give yourself some caramel. That should be good right there. And now I'm gonna go get you a spoon to mix it. So as you can see, while I'm going to get the spoon, it's a little bit difficult. I mean, she's never done this before and she, you just have to find what techniques work for you because the techniques that may work for somebody else may not work for you. So you have to just kind of judge it while you're actually in the process of making the shot of espresso because that's just what's gonna be the most comfortable to you. So now she's gonna stir coffee and she's gonna tell you how it tastes. So she's incorporating all that caramel and sugar in there. All right, so go ahead and give it a taste test for everybody back at home. Yeah, that tastes good. Does it taste like mine? Mm -mm. Not like yours, but it tastes pretty good. All right, so as you guys watched, uh, one big mistake that she made when steaming the milk was she held the steam wand right in the middle of the pitcher and she was adding a lot of bubbles at first. Uh, that's one thing you do not want to do when frothing your milk because you're not going to get that silky, creamy, paint-like texture. Literally, you have to rest it into the spout onto three or nine o'clock, and that's when you're going to get the best results. Um, however, you don't have to. And like I said, it's comfortability, whatever works for you. It's just something that I have witnessed and I have also done myself firsthand. And it's a lot easier to control the flow of milk when you have the steam wand that's rested inside of the spout of the pitcher itself. Um, another thing is, is you want to add about 30 to 35 seconds of air for the Barista Express because the steam power, however, is not that strong. So because it's not that strong, I would say about 30 to 35 seconds of air introduction and about 30 to 35 seconds of submerging that steam one down and really getting that roll of the milk to incorporate all of the microfoam into the milk so it's all one property as opposed to pouring it and then you get big blobs in the beginning or pouring it nice and smooth and then you get really, really thin texture so you can't really finish that lot there. So when you guys are first starting out the machine, don't try. Well, you can try, but it's going to be a lot more frustrating for you to try to pour latte art. Latte art is extremely hard, especially when you're only pulling like one or two shots a day. Uh, definitely, if you're getting used to your machine, I recommend that you just go ahead and just pour that in there. Uh, just because you're going to get a lot more confidence as you continue this process and it's going to be a lot easier. And my wife is going to be working hand in hand with me to be a better home barista if you want to come back in here. So she is going to be working each and every day or the days that she can. She's also a full-time student and she works full-time. Uh, so she is going to, whenever she has time, we're going to go ahead and record her so you guys can see where she started and how she finishes and to see how much more comfortable she actually gets when doing the process and also as well as picking up some 
key techniques that work for her that make it easier to pull that perfect shot of espresso and to pour that perfect latte art. This has been the first episode of the new series, Making Coffee with Brittany at Dylan's Home Espresso Bar. So this, just tell us in the comments down below what you thought about it. Uh, something, maybe some tips that maybe you guys from home could maybe give her because you know, I, th this is a family channel and I definitely want to hear feedback from you viewers from home because you're the reason why this channel is even possible. And for that, we both love you and appreciate each and every one of you. Happy New Year once again. Happy 2021, we're going to go strong. We're going to pump out a lot of content. And she's going to be in a lot of my videos as well as a lot of my family members because family members are very important to me. And so are you guys at home. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you. Doing so much espresso bar. Until next time, peace. peace.